Former U.S. President James Garfield once described the ideal college as a professor on one end of a log and a student on the other. With its emphasis on personal education, Center has always embraced the spirit of Garfield's metaphor. But when Center opened for instruction in 1820, Garfield's description fits Center almost literally. We had a single building, Old Center, half its present size. It housed two professors and five students. It sat half a mile from the village of Danville, a few hundred people in a few dozen houses, many of them log cabins. What dreamers the founders were to think that such a modest, isolated enterprise could somehow become a beacon of learning for their young nation. Yet, Center barely survived its first decade. Writing half a century later, Center President Ormond Beatty noted that in 1830, Center was, quote, without reputation, without endowment, and without students, end quote. That was the year John C. Young arrived to take up the job as president. He moved quickly to put the college on sound footing, but he was not all about raising money and recruiting students. In 1840, Center student Moses G. Knight wrote to his brother, I think that Mr. Young makes it a point to learn the character of every mind in his class. By the time President Young died in office in 1857, Center had been reborn with more than 250 students, a substantial endowment, and an excellent reputation. Its alumni included a sitting vice president of the United States. But Center would face many more challenges. The Civil War came to Danville in 1862, with the Confederates and then the Union Army alternately occupying the campus. In 1873, about a third of the endowment was stolen in a Louisville bank robbery. Financial panics and ensuing depressions in the 1870s, 1890s, and 1907 strained the college enrollments and budgets just as the Great Depression and World War II would do in the 1930s and 40s. Yet Center survived, it adapted, and it grew. Center also built on the inclusive intentions of the founders. They established Center as a Presbyterian college open to men of all creeds. But in its early decades, Center took the first steps toward inviting women to study here as well. Four daughters of President John C. Young had completed all degree requirements by 1851. Two more women became the first to receive diplomas in 1883. And in 1962, Center completed the transition to full co-education by moving the women here from the old KCW campus. The 1960s, of course, coincided with the Civil Rights Movement. President Thomas Spragans had taken office vowing to integrate Center, and in 1962 admitted transfer student Timothy Cousy from Ghana, who became the first black man to enroll here and the first to graduate in 1965. President Spragans also built much of our campus, most notably the magnificent Newland Hall, which has hosted so many memorable events, including two vice presidential debates. Those debates have prompted President Rausch to describe Center as, quote, a place where important conversations occur, end quote. The debates certainly were important, but every day the really important conversations, the ones that change lives, occur in Krauts, in Olin, in London, in Strasbourg, and anywhere we can find a log to sit on.